Hi. I don't really make YouTube videos that often, but when I do, they're sponsored. Am I right? This video is sponsored by Adam and Eve, and I'm gonna tell you about them in a little bit. I asked you on Instagram if you had any sex, dating, and relationship questions for me so that I could give advice, because it's been a while. Um, and YouTube is finally starting to not demonetize me as much. Well, they still do, but then I, ha I appeal it and then they grant my appeal. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We'll take the bone that they've thrown me and I'll try not to talk about You know what I mean? Also, if you're not following me on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube shorts, um, you definitely should because I'm posting like three to five videos a week now, short form content. We've got to learn and grow. I've been doing this since 2006, you guys. I made my first YouTube video in 2006. So let's get into the questions. I've got them all here. I haven't looked at them yet, so. Let's find some. This question says, any advice for asexuals? I'm ace panromantic, by the way, if that factors into anything. What advice would I give to an asexual? Don't date anyone that doesn't respect your identity. And if they ever make you feel uncomfortable about being ace, throw them in the trash can. You know what I mean? I would love to give advice to ace people. If you have a question and you're ace, leave a comment below and I'll get down in there and tippy tappy. So this question says, um, butch lesbian insecurities when it comes to sex, why it feels too vulnerable to receive. I think that the biggest reason it feels so vulnerable or wrong or complex emotionally um, is because of gender norms and gender rules, roles, and all of the bull that isn't real. Right, but as queer people, we already have so much guilt and shame and complex emotions surrounding sex and dating and relationships in our day-to-day -day life anyway. Um, so they're bound to come out in the bedroom once we've already overcome so many of those. Um, I think that there's this false story that we're told about bottoming and bottoms and, and receiving and that it belongs to a certain type of woman only, <laughs> no other genders at all. Um, and when you're butch, your identity kind of conflicts with that. And so it's difficult to um, feel comfortable receiving. But the good news is all of that is bull you know? It doesn't mean that your feelings aren't valid. It just means that they might not be there forever. Good luck. Okay, the next question is, why do people ghost in dating and why is dating so hard? I mean, dating is hard. I don't know if I have any answers for you on that one, but I do find ghosting really interesting because I always thought that ghosting is the worst thing you can do. So um, <laughs> uh, I would try to avoid it. But then I read a few op-eds and like comments and tweets about people who prefer ghosting um, and I find it really interesting. I think that people tend to treat others how they would like to be treated. So when someone is ghosting you, they might not, that's how they would want to be treated if they aren't interested in dating you for whatever reason, it could have nothing to do with you. Um, but for me, I want someone to tell me exactly what the is going on all the time. You know what I mean? So relatable. I would hate to be ghosted. Um, but I don't know if there's a solution. I think some people ghost, some people don't. Some people breadcrumb. Have you heard of breadcrumbing? The worst! I think in a, in a recent video I talked about ghosting and what to do about it. Um, but I think, you know, just chalk it up to that's not the person for me. If they're ghosting you and that is not something that you like, <laughs> then they're not the person for you. Keep trying, keep looking. You got this, I believe in you. The next question is, I'm 27, still a virgin. How do I get over the crippling fear of having sex at all when I've had years to build it up? There is this thing called a sexual surrogate and they are a professional that you hire um, and they teach you how to have sex. Look it up, you're welcome. Also, I can't recommend enough sex therapists, um, therapists that specialize in uh, sexuality or sexual trauma and stuff like that. They're the best therapists in my opinion. I think also my answer to that question would be like watch 
some like more recent modern like te- like what? teen shows and movies and stuff because I feel like when we were teenagers all of the media around virgins was like that's embarrassing mm. it was like the 40 year old virgin and it was like um, American Pie and like all these different things um, and I feel like now that's not the case like in teen movies at least the decent ones and the TV shows it's very much like normalizing like being scared of sex sex education okay sex great, education but also um Heartstopper. Yeah, watch Sex Education and Heartstopper. Okay, the next question is, I'm 32, she's 53. Thoughts on age gaps? She wants to keep it on the low down. Um, breakup. Moving on. Well, Not because of the age gap, but because she wants to keep it a secret. Literally, do you have time for that? You're freaking 32 years old. No. The next question is, any advice for getting back into having sex after assault slash abuse besides therapy? I have an entire video with my friend Jiminika um a, that goes really into depth about um exactly what to do and has is full of advice and i will link it down below so you can go and watch that one so the next question is sometimes i'm scared that my lover masturbates without me when i'm not there sex with another person and sex with yourself are two completely different things and i think that there's so much stig stigma and hang-ups and I guess jealousy that can happen when you don't separate those two things. Um, I think, I don't know, some people might feel like they're the same because their whole point is to get off, I guess. I think that masturbation is self-love and self-care and getting to know yourself. Um, and sex with another person is connecting with another person. I think you should maybe bring it up to them and be like, hey, do you want to mutually masturbate? You know, why not? You can you can even masturbate in different rooms, different places and text each other, or send voice notes. Um, if that's something that you want to try to be more involved with, but also you need to respect it if they want to do that on their own because their sexuality is their responsibility and yours is yours. But if you need any tips on um, where to get some masturbation toys, I'm so glad you asked. You didn't ask, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Thank you so much to adamandeve.com for sponsoring today's video. Um, I've got some things that I probably have to blur out to show you guys. You can go to adamandeve.com and if you use my coupon code Stevie, you can get 50% off one single item plus free shipping to the US and Canada. You're welcome. Is that an apple? Yeah. It's called Shegasm. Forbidden apple. Do you want this one? Is this your favorite one? Let me have a look at it. What does, what's forbidden about it? <laughs> it's got a snake inside of it. Can you tell that Josie's never heard of the Bible? <laughs> it's got a snake on it. <laughs> Josie, do, do you know, can you take a guess of why a snake and an apple would be related to each other at all? The snakes like eating apples or something? I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God. Guys, if you have religious trauma, I cannot recommend dating someone who doesn't know anything about religion enough. It's it's so healing. Look at that! Wow, can you see it? Wow, this is so nice. Isn't it? Does it twist open? Careful, the snake might come out. Ah! Oh my God, this would be a perfect gift if your partner is a teacher. <laughs> oh my God. Ah! So, person who asked that question about masturbating. Um, I can't recommend enough going to adamandeve.com and using my coupon code Stevie for 50% off any one single item plus free shipping to the US and Canada so that you can mutually masturbate with your partner, with your lover. Sorry, you called them your lover. And remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> You're hired. The next question is, as a neurodivergent, what's the best way to find other neurospicy folks? BDSM. No, I will not be elaborating. So the next question is, would you ever do videos on oral like you did on fingering? They really helped me. I have lots of videos on oral. I'll, I'll link them below, but also if you follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, I'll be uploading a sex ed video once a week from now on. So, well, mostly once a week, most weeks. Okay, the next question is, I'm a 17 year old trans girl and I wanna fool around for the first time and I don't know how to go about it, help. So I recommend a book um, called Girl Sex 101. It is incredible and inclusive, no matter what your genitals are. Um, do I have it on my bookshelf? It's by Alison Moon. I'll link it in the description so that you can look it up. 
highly, highly recommend. So the next one is, I am non-binary and my partner is a cis woman. We just bought a strap on, any advice before using it? Yes, wear it around the house when you're not doing sexy things and when you're alone. Literally just make breakfast while you're wearing it, uh, sit on the couch and watch TV while you're wearing it, walk around the house, do some jumping jacks, get used to it as an appendage on your body and that should help you um, get a little bit more comfortable with it before you're like performing in front of someone else. Good luck. So this is a good one. Um, I'm in love with my best friend. Do I ruin the friendship or let it be? I think that is a common misconception that telling your best friend that you have a crush on them will automatically ruin the friendship. Um, the best that could happen is they're like, oh my God, I'm in love with you too. Let's get married. You know what I mean? And then the worst that could happen is they're really freaked out and like become homophobic or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and would you want to be friends with them anyway, if that's how they reacted to it? You know? The worst, actually, in my opinion, that could happen is that you keep it a secret forever and then it eats at you on the inside and it doesn't free up any space in your life emotionally or romantically for you to actually find the one that you want to be with. So just get it out of the way. Rip the Band-Aid off, you know? Secrecy fuels excitement and obsession. So stop keeping it a secret and then hopefully you'll find some relief. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much to my patrons for continuing to support me. Um, they are the reason I'm able to keep making videos. So thank you so much. Um, if you wanna become part of my patron family, click the link in the description and sign up. Also, thanks again to adamneve.com for sponsoring. Uh, don't forget to save that coupon code because it's the good one. Talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye. I made a phallic object. Josie thinks this is a phallic object. Do you know what I mean? I can't say if I've seen one. Let me take it better. So Josie has revised her phallus. Now it looks like this.